getting passed by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So Miroff in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategy from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and approaches he's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Push more and fall and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Sensational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such a trouble. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh, watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligna has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still such trouble. He's such a second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Me Barry's going to do it. Me Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another season of the Sim Racing Collective F4 Sprint Championship. We take two, uh, of course, the infamous Formula 4 machines that have proved their success. Myself, Zach Sweeney, James Parfit alongside me in the commentary booth to talk you through both uh, of our races here tonight. One 15 minutes in length, the other 25 minutes with a top 10 reverse. And of course chance for a little bit of rain we take to snetherton here today the luscious sites of norfolk england and james uh, of course a new season a new beginning and some great machines to take us racing yeah it should be really good love the f4s 160 brake horsepower 570 kilos and a nice little multi-shift gearbox just to go with them as well and we're on the short layout of snetterton which are basically in equivalent Snetterton oval layout, right? Because not a lot to it. You go down the start, finish straight, turn right, turn right, turn left, and you start all over again. But again, eight corners these guys have got to contend with as well. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting, I think, um, on this one. No Josh Middleton, who won last season's championship. Not here, but we have still got some very speedy races there instead. Yeah, we do indeed. Some really big names. Of course, those that uh, follow some other TSRC contingents will know uh, the likes of Oscar Saristo, uh, the likes of Jamie Nuttall, of course, a champion over in the TSRC PC GT3 uh, championship. Uh, a couple of other names as well from that particular contingent, the likes of, uh, uh, of course, Marcel Hess. Uh, we have also got Gurley Conchabo in there, Guillaume Hamling uh, as well. Plenty of recognisable names here to prove themselves uh, in what I have to say uh, you know, I, I'm never shy from saying it. The Formula 4 machines are hands down my favourite cars on iRacing. They are the perfect blend between, like, they're fast, but they're not overwhelming. Do you, do you, get, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I do understand what you mean. They're, they're a good trainer car, um, the Formula 4s. You know, you go, obviously, uh, you would look at Super Formula Lights, Super Formulas, W13, um, and move up. But... Open wheel is not something that really mainly loved as such on iRace. I think open wheel doesn't quite get the love that it deserves considering it quite a big part of the iRacing setup. And I think at the end of the day, you're looking at GT3 is really the main kind of focal. Point. We get a new one every season when there's other series like the TDRs that could do it as well. So, I think for, for, for this, as Nuttall just goes and puts it on pole, Tom Davidson in second and Aaron Fall on third. I think the open wheels is going to be an interesting one. I'd like to see how these guys run. Obviously, the first one's always going to be a little bit dodgy because obviously you know who to go wheel to wheel with, who to get room with and make sure that you don't get tapped by anybody. So it's going to be an exciting one, I think. It is. Uh, and of course, it's not just today. Obviously, that's not necessarily how a championship works. Uh, we have got, in typical, again, TSRC fashion, six rounds uh, of racing action. Today, we start probably at the peak, as that's not the uh, the way to handle the, the, the Brundle Nelson chicane, uh, as proved by the TSRC car. Uh, we, of course, start today, arguably, as I say, at its peak here in Snetterton. In a week's time, we'll head to Sebring, then Oscherschleben to uh, head to round number three, Fuji for round four, Oren Park and the Hockenheim ring to round off the season. Uh, and yeah, Yes, that is what not to do. So talking of this car being uh, quite a nice trainer car, James, uh, well, certainly learned something there. Yeah, he definitely did. Not to hit the grass. Um, because Simple as that. Simple as that. Because slick tyres don't hit grasses very well as Frank uh, Ruiz goes into pole position. They've just seen him in the background go over the line. Bobby Moss in the famous Nigel Mansell Red 5 livery for anybody old and can remember that one, him going side by side with Senna down the straight was absolutely incredible. Took the 1992 F1 championship there, Zach. You're not going to remember that because you weren't even alive at that point. I was minus 14, James. 
Great. Well, yeah. the more that Nigel Mansell with um, win at 31 one championship. There we go, Nigel Mansell. So, fielding the ho well, hopefully, uh, hope, hopefully, going to channel some of that Nigel Mansell energy uh, into his uh, into his racing. Even though his name's Moss, and surely it'd make more sense to go for a Sterling Moss livery as opposed to a Nigel Mansell one. But you know, whatever tickles your fancy, uh, we don't judge the liveries unless it's a Red Bull one. And, and, and on that note, I really dislike people that use F1 liveries on like any other car that's not an F1 car. It. I don't know. It's not for me. Tom Davidson tops qualifying once again, a 1 minute 8251. Of course, it's looking very, very close at the top. You can see Hoot uh, just about half a tenth back. Porto Ruiz just less than a tenth back. Nuttall full uh, a tenth and a half separates the top five. When you've got a circuit variation that is essentially an oval, you are going to be lending yourself two lap times that are incredibly close. How is that going to translate into, of course, race one, then into race two? Does this qualifying session set the tone for the race, or is it the Beeler and Endel? Does it not even matter? It doesn't really matter. I think a lot of aspects taken into um, into qualifying itself, right? Yeah, it's great if you can get up the front. And, but some circuits, important like Long Beach, you want to be at the front for Long Beach. You want to be at the front for pretty much most road circuits. But other circuits you can get away with and uh, and i think that could be one of them i think the draft is going to be um exceedingly strong they've got the bentley straight to run down they've got out of murray's down into turn one so the lead change will be all, all, always happening tom davidson goes faster again on a 108 jamie nutt on a 108217 so I, I think at the end of the day, they've got to be aware that, yes, pole can be important at tracks. I don't think it's going to be mightily important here. That's fair, because, I mean, we've got, yeah, literally not, you know, what, one, two, three, four. Oh, there's, there's a little kink there. Sorry, I forgot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight corners, if, yeah, depending on what, obviously what you count as a proper corner or not. Uh, with that, we've got the pit straight. We've got the Bentley Strait, which is the longest straight in the UK. Uh, so a long run uh, from Williams into Brundle and Nelson, that complex there. And even then, it's not the hardest of braking zones. So are we just going to be expecting sort of, th yeah, that NASCAR dynamic slipping me off each other, waiting for an opportunity to go for a move? Because, well, I, I mean, is it worth battling for the first 10 minutes of the race if you know full well you can get the moves done in the last five? Not really. Fair. We've seen people wait till the very last lap at tracks like Road Atlanta, Road America. And I don't see this one could be any different. Obviously, in the last lap, you've got two opportunities, two bites at the carry almost. So I, I think going forward for them, it's not going to hurt being in second or third when it comes to the final lap of the race. As long as you're close enough, you know, you're in that two and a half attempt slipstream area, you'll still get that draft going forward. And, and I think... You've got to look at, at the end of the day, what, they, what they're what they going to look at doing. It's obviously being that draft as best as physically possible. And it's going to be one that's going to take effect, I think, here tonight, as we've got Maymay, come on, Bobby, and you do that. Sasha, go Gullum, Sean O'Reilly, go James uh, there. So welcome in, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bells, depending on where you're watching it, whether it's on the JBB channel or the TSRC YouTube channel. And uh, subscribe to both. Why not? You get Great action all the way through the week. So uh, get yourselves involved in that one. Here in Sharp at the moment, sitting in third on a 108.29. We break that second barrier all the way down from first to 18th. So that's going to be an interesting one, Zach, with only a second. First 18. Yeah, it's not much, which is understandable. There's not a lot of opportunity to gain time here uh, at the Snetterton 200 uh, layout. Uh, into the pit lane comes Tom Davidson. That's going to be the end of his qualifying. Jamie Nuttall unable to improve. And again, it's all about timing, really, sometimes uh, when it comes to uh, tracks that have that oval dynamic, particularly when you've got an open qualifying, or, well, pretty much exclusively when you've got an open qualifying. You are so reliant on that slipstream to get a good uh, run because the only time really you're going to be gaining time is on the straights with a good little bit of slipstream because in the corners there's not that many of them to gain that time after qualifying though uh, it was the tsrc driver of tom davidson uh, locking up the front row alongside jamie nuttall who will join him in p2 kieran sharp game hoot at uh, three and four uh, ahead of that uh, frank 
Portet Ruiz there in P5. Ron Bouch just there in P6 ahead of her own full. Uh, and David Santa Maria, uh, row four. Hayden Miller and Kim Hamlin complete the top 10 ahead uh, of Bobby Moss, the Nigel Mansell fan club car. Oscar Cerristo joins him on row six for P12. The Flying Finn looking to make some progress forward into the top 10 over the course of race one, I'm sure. The Hungarian Okunshabo alongside James O'Reilly. Then comes Matt Acton. Let's see if he's going to have a photo finish a little bit later on uh, there in P15. Simon Norton rounds off the top eight rows ahead of Stefan Huter, Marcel Hess. Jan Wenzel and Grant Miller, the top 20. Then comes the Dane of Thomas Hemmler, Matt Smith and David Barnes to round off the 23 strong car field that we've got ahead of round number one. It's not the longest run into turn number one here at Snetterton. So how, this initial start phase, I, I mean, it's crucial if you want to get some decent track position. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've got to be looking out on whether or not or how they're going to approach turn one. It's going to be very tight. It's going to be very tricky. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how these guys get on. And I think they've got to look at the fact that turn one is, a, is you know, a fast right-hander. It's not a slow right-hander. It's quite a fast right-hander. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it works out for them. See what happens when they get down into turn two. We will indeed. All of our questions will have answers. Of course, the adrenaline is going to be flowing for these drivers, whether it's their first ever time in a Formula 4 machinery, whether they're a returning veteran, whether they've got something to prove, whether they're just here for fun, there is excitement, anticipation ahead of a brand new championship. Everyone is on the grid. We're waiting for the five red lights. There they are. 15 minutes on the clock. Davidson and Nuttall, the front row. The Snetterton 200 circuit plays host of the TSRC F4 Championship. And we are underway in racing. Great start from pole position for Tom Davidson. He's already able to cover off Jamie Nuttall. Kieran Sharp looking very menacing in the rearview mirror of Jamie Nuttall. But the top three single file as they run their way into Richie's for the first time. Then the run towards Montreal. But look how this corner is going to be the very important one. The exit off of this one is vital. A couple of people going side by side into the braking zone of turn number two. Bit of contact, Simon Norton, uh, they're getting, getting tagged on the inside by Marcel Hess. Now they start the important bit of the Bentley straight. Yeah, this is it. This is one foul run here. And into Brandon and Nelson, of course, the first heavy braking zone of the circuit. Tom Davidson, not really uh, under much pressure from Jamie Nuttall, who I think uh, more able to just tuck in behind uh, and uh, consolidate that position rather than battling too hard too early. Uh, I think is the general consensus more than anything. It's settling into a rhythm, not getting yourselves caught up too quickly. And like I say, finding that rhythm. 15 minutes is not the longest of races, but when you're under pressure at the race lead, it can feel like an eternity. Yeah, it absolutely can. And Davidson's going to have a little bit of a mission on his hands now as they're coming down the start finish straight for the first time. You see Nuttall on the right hand side. Kieran Sharp tucked in there as well. Nuttall's going to try and hang it out. He's got to be careful. He doesn't leave the door open enough for Sharp though, because otherwise Sharp's going to take that opportunity and come up the inside where he can. So Nuttall's got to be careful. He's got to try and look on attacking Davidson, but also defending from Kieran Sharp at the same time, which isn't always easy. It is not. Fortunately for him, it's Kieran Sharp and he should probably be fine. Uh, I say that, actually. I'm quite astonished as to how good of a driver Kieran Sharp actually is. P2 last time uh, in the TSRC F4 Championship behind Josh Millington. Aaron Foll looking to the inside, trying to get involved with this battle with Hooter Rombouts uh, as they run their way into Brundle Nelson. A little bit of a look there as well, I believe, uh, from Form Porte Ruiz to the inside of the second part of that chicane. Through the bomb hole, of course, that dip on the inside, probably the only bit of undulation in the entirety of North Norfolk, making sure to use that camber is to properly rotate the machine. Uh, Aaron Fulk going into the braking zone for Murray's. And that is a tricky one, especially in cars that don't have ABS. Yeah, you've got to be careful when you're coming into Murray's, the left-hander, because you're coming round. You've almost got to try and break in a straight line and get the car rotating. Not an easy thing to do. Nuttall's just swapped places with Davidson. Davidson's now, you can see Nuttall on the left-hand side there, just going out. And now Davidson is going to be under attack from Kieran Sharp, who is alongside us at the moment here as we're going into Montreal, the right-hander. Then we're going to go to the left kink. Now we've got that run down Bentley Straight again. Aaron Phil still at it. Gwilym Van Hoot is also there as well, sitting in fourth and fifth, sixth and fifth. These guys going side by side currently, all from fourth place at the moment for the Aerokinetics. Boy of Aaron as he's trying to go past Gwilym. It does make you pass. Gwilym's still just come around the outside into Romba Elts is all over the curb. That's surely going to cause an accordion effect and all the cars going to get punching back up together. 
Yeah, side by side, I think that's full versus Porte Ruiz. That's going to allow Miller to close the gap as well, going into Corum. Beautiful to see open wheel cars dance their way through the long, long right hand. They're dancing his way, the number 28. That is remarkable stuff from full. Goes in way too deep into Murray's, though. That allows the up and under for, 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 from Porte Ruiz to get the move. Then comes uh, Miller as well, going to move his way up in the seventh place. So full very quickly has put himself under pressure. Uh, fight for P4 is here. Uh, Rombouts versus Hout, the 18 machine of Rombouts on the inside going into Richie's that is the more beneficial line the one that definitely should pay off in the end side by side for P2 as well as Davidson falls behind Sharp and can't quite find a way back through yeah there's action all the way through the field the top three are swapping places backwards and forwards we're going to do it again here I think Sharp and Davidson with Nuttall is all going to be scrapping it out solidly you can see the guys in the background going side by side Rumbouts is at the front with Ruiz then you've got Miller Van Hu and Full there as well as these guys coming down into the left hand or a brundle now and then going through nelson there's two pockets of battles developing you can see first to third and then third or the fourth all the way downwards from there so quite a little bit of a mission there as well kieran sharps even managed to get himself dragged back into this and that is partly because i've got a funny feeling he's done that he's got off the side of the circuit got a bit squeezed on the exit of nelson and unfortunately did not make it through Momentum, momentum, momentum. It's so important, not only in Formula 4 cars, because they've not got a tremendous amount of power. That's uh, something in the region of 160 brake horsepower, I believe you said earlier, all to the rear wheels. Uh, and a uh, circuit like Snetterton, where you have to keep your minimum speed to well, a high, you have to keep the minimum to a maximum for as much of the lap as you possibly can. You are going to struggle if you lose just a little bit of momentum. Takes you a while to build it back up. And one mistake is seeing Kieran Sharp lose two seconds to take that top three fight. It's now just the top two between Nuttall and Davidson. Uh, Ron Bouts, though, is not going to waste this opportunity to battle for a podium. He's got sights of last year's runner-up right in his sights, going into Brundle and Nelson. Not quite late enough on the brakes, not really eager enough i suppose on the brakes maybe hoping for a chance they can re-catch because the moment Nuttall and davison battle that two and a half seconds that's going to mean nothing yeah that's you're asking a lot right with two people who are very sensible in f4 car you know Nuttall and davidson know that they've got to break away from the pack that's the only thing they've got to really make sure they do sharps under pressure he's going to be under pressure all day as we see from rombouts there he's going to be literally dealing with this situation look at rombo scale now he's going to look at pulling out around the outside there's going to be a bad move in conjunction because unless he can cut back he's going to lose the inside for turn number two so really he wants to be on the outside if he can sharp's not giving him a sniff and now rombo is under pressure from ruiz who's just sent it on him going into turn two before they go through for free and now they start that run down the bentley straight again and look how quickly Kieran Sharp's been able to pull out nearly a second gap purely because of that one single move. Porto Ruiz finds his way up into P4. However, that might well be momentary success. Into Brundle and Nelson side by side as well. Full getting himself into the action. Rombout's not quite able to launch an attack. Very be uh, squeaky bum time between the pair of them. There goes, of course, Full on the inside of Brundle waiting uh, for his time. Then into Nelson capitalizes on it quite nicely through the bomb hole. Uh, and there's Full up into the top five, potentially sparking a move for p4 in the near future as well but he's got to be careful he's got to keep his wits about him and that's the dynamic that they're in in a race like this oh it was side by side for van hoot and miller they're going round at murray's last two last corner they were battling it out as well we've just broken into the seven minute mark almost halfway through you can see the mantle bobby moss livery machine behind us he's trying to get through as well there's just nowhere to go in that midsection that they are literally so close together as you can see alongside us is, uh, is santa maria here as he's just about to go up the inside he has gone through taking our nose up on the exit and now bobby moss has got to go again he's got the bentley straight the trouble is is what draft he's got Santa Maria's got the same thing with the cars in front. So it's really up to Moss to make sure he is so, so close coming into the left hand or a brundle that he can make it coming out through the right hand as we go through Bombhole, Corum and Murray's to get that run down up for start finish straight. And that, Mr. Moss, is not going to get you close as they're free wide further down as well, the Rombouts and also Full and also Port uh, Ru ah, Ruiz. There's a name in there somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, uh, my age, mate, you said dead cream. Unfortunately, just sometimes it falls out. That's, that's what you get for being able to remember Nigel Mansell, I think. Um, 
Tom Davidson versus Jamie Nuttall, of course, that swapped uh, momentarily. Not entirely sure if Nuttall's going to go for a counter-attack or not in the near future. Side by side, the 28, that's full. Uh, defensive into Richie's Rombout, not quite able to get the up and under, but it definitely does give you a better run. You can see under pressure uh, is Aaron Full. Viardi Rombouts, though, searching for that gap. Not quite able to get it into Montreal, this tight chicane-like complex. It's not worth it going for a move, knowing how much time you can lose. Oh, there's one of the uh, Aston Martin liveried F4s there. I know you love a good F1 livery on an F4, as it were on board with the Aston Martin of James O'Reilly. Pacing down Gwilym Hamling here. Dick Hamling in front. Hamling just wicker through that first half. Also, unfortunately, looks like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place don't really know what to do he's got to gather his head again he's a little bit on the jagged edge i think riding probably and driving harder than he probably needs to especially as the fact he's still got six minutes which is in two roughly about six laps seven laps to go and almost as though he had done unfortunately he's gone down positions he's down one place where he gridded and he's lost a couple throughout the race as well so there's a lot that's going to happen here and I don't think this is done by any shape of the imagination. And Kieran Sharp, well, I don't want to be in his shoes at the moment because currently he has got everybody. There's Kieran Sharp. He's got three seconds to Araya um, Full, who's got Ron Bouts, Ruiz, and everybody, basically, pretty much behind that. To be fair, I wouldn't mind being in his position. He's got the easiest job. And because of the battle between Davidson and Nuttall, he's back within the slipstream range. Three wide as they run their way down the Bentley straight towards Brundle and Nelson. Let's see who's going to be the better beneficiary of this one. Rumbouts all the way to the left. They're going to take it four wide. The 23 trying to squeeze it through there. Of course, is the 97 trying to funnel his way in as well. That's Oscar Saristo side by side at the front of this train. Porto Ruiz able to hang on to fourth place. Aaron Full then stuck on the outside, but not able to lose another position. Thankfully for him. There goes Oscar Ceristo battling away with uh, Rombout, and that is the consequence of battling too soon. They're going too wide, too deep on that run in towards Murray's. Yeah, they've gone through the bum hole too wide, which is quite good for them. So it's, um, it looks like Ceristo went off the side of the circuit. Ruiz is now under attack from Fall once more. Fall's really not quite sure where to go. He was getting all loose in the middle there, but loosey goosey from Fuller coming around turn one. Then he's got the group all the way down to James O'Reilly, who's right at the back. We've got Aston Martin versus Williams at the back end here in the liveries. Oh, bro, where are you going? Oh, man, that was a send and a half there. I think it was Santa Maria in, yeah, it was in that machine. And he literally got it all wrong, hit the grass and had to try and stop the car. Yeah, and that is how easy it can happen. One small mistake and boom. Uh, it's, well, can nearly be all over if you don't react quick enough. Santa Maria uh, going into Brundle and oh. Nelson. A little bit pinched and there's contact. And that is how, and there's more at the front. Huge crash here going through the chicane and rolling back onto the circuit. Santa Maria nearly into the path there, I believe, of Norton. Talk us through it. Yeah, Gordon Van Holt just gets it all a lot a bit wrong. He comes in, he bounces the curb. Unsettles the car, go round he goes, collects everybody else. Bobby Moss is there. There was a car on top of Moss. I'm wondering if that was, wow, that was a very poor rejoin. I'm not going to lie on that one. If you watch the rejoin from Gwilym Van Hoop here, watch this rejoin as he comes through. He starts driving on into the cars. And I'm, no, I didn't, just no. And, and no again, it, there's a lot more no's in that one, as I believe Hamling is the one that went upside down here, Zach, as he got caught up, looking at the sky, over he goes, and we're now sitting on the roll bar of that F4. Thank God. There as well, it is only imaginary or, what else can we do? Uh, virtual. Those there you go. Virtual. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not imaginary. Uh, oh, virtual. It's there. Virtual, maybe. It's yeah, virtual. Um, pretend, pretend race cars. That's what we like to. That's what we like to see. Uh, up the front, Tom Davidson still leading from Jamie Nuttall. Kieran Sharp momentarily within a second, uh, but that's fallen out after these two have settled down. How long is that going to remain a truce for though between the pair of these guys? Defensive into Richie's at least for a moment was Tom Davidson. 
thinking about defending, uh, but not, all, uh, not quite close enough for an attack. Look at the glare. I couldn't imagine having to drive with that beaming down into your face, whether it's virtual or real. It's not fun having the sun uh, glare at you through Montreal, then the left, then onto the Bentley straight. And this is where you make your money if you're the car behind, because this is the golden opportunity with just a handful of laps left to go. Two at the line, I believe. And here comes Jamie Nuttall going for the lead. Yeah, he's got to take the left-hand side. He really wants the side if he can or Nelson he's not going to get it this time not all just kind of almost reminds me of a lion playing with his food a little bit here I think he knows he can get Davidson but he's got to get closer coming through Corum down into Murray's here the left hander gotta keep it nice and close get that run down the start finish line there's going to be one and one more maybe just about at the line here we'll keep an eye because iRacing does do weird and funky things and all of a sudden it will be the white flag barney isn't there i think barney's off on holiday in general and jamie nuttall now i believe may get one and one more opportunity here as he continues to fight rum about full and port of ruiz going at each other as well they're coming round to uh, uh turn one Look, no 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 Careful, boys, careful. Uh, but Squeaky going through the next uh, uh, left hand, of course, of turn three. He's going to go straight through. Uh, is Ron about to spot the gap uh, and beautifully done? He hasn't quite got enough overlap, though, I don't think, uh, to go for P4. Change for the lead as well. Nuttall versus Davidson. Nuttall able to keep the lead. We'll focus our attention on this battle, though, into the chicane. Uh, and the 18 unable to go the long way around. Or does he actually? Late bit of agility to send oh, him through. They emerge three wide. three wide on the exit as full actually gets the upper under to side to back out though going into the next right hand they're still side by side though Porto Ruiz versus Rombouts yeah unfortunately for Davidson he's gone off the side of the circuit that's put him under the clutches of Kieran Sharp Sharp's going to have a go on the right hand side you can see him there in that 23 machine going for it on the right he's got one more lap this is it final lap oh it's finished told you it was do. close told you it did they do thank you I mean they crossed the line at, what was it, 13.58, which, of course, a one-minute lap time would see you perfectly on 15 minutes. Uh, so not entirely sure as to why the white flag wasn't thrown, but nonetheless, it's Jamie Nuttall from Tom Davidson, Kieran Sharp, ever so close to the back end of the 42. Photo finish across the line between the pair of them. What a battle all the way through. And, of course, uh, we'll run you through the full extent of the grid order. But for race two, 25 minutes, so we had an extra 10 on, plus a top 10 reverse. Nuttall and Davidson, they did great at running away from the front. How are they going to fare from, you know, having, having to fight their way through a pack? I, you know what? If I had an answer for that, I would pick next week's lottery number. But at the moment, I really don't because I'm not sure how it's going to go because they've got to work on the fact that they've got to try and get over the line and making sure that they get through the reverse grid so, all in all, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out, but that's the results of race one. Yeah, Jamie Nuttall uh, able to convert that front row into a victory in the end. Seven tenths back was Tom Davidson, who a further half a tenth back uh, was his teammate of Kieran Sharp, who completes the podium. Frank Porte Ruiz with Arnie Rombouts in a very heated discussion for the top five. Uh, there goes Aaron Full. Hayden Miller just in behind ahead of James O'Reilly. Uh, Gogli Kinshaba ahead of Sh uh, Simon Norton. He's going to be rounding up on pole position for race two. Uh, Janis Wenzel in P11 ahead of Matt Acton, who worked his way up quite nicely into P12 uh, after 15th on the grid a little bit earlier on. Bobby Moss from Grant Miller, David Santa Maria, Guillaume Hoot uh, there in P16 ahead of Matt Smith, Thomas Hemler, Chris Barnes, Stefan Hooter uh, there in P20. Marcel Hess from Oscar Saristo, who momentarily was inside the top 10, but of course that huge crash about the halfway point uh, saw a number of cars DNF. And Guillaume Hamling uh, is the last of them there in P23. Good thing is, is because there are so many points on offer, everyone gets something. Definitely. Who was in 19th? David Barnes. Okay, David Barnes. All right, just check. Check in. Interesting. Okay, what? Why? Called him Chris Barnes. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Let me have a look at the entry list. What is his name? It is David, David Barnes. Barnes. No, it's David, David Barnes. Barnes but you called him Chris Barnes. Did I? Yeah. I think you're. Did I actually? Yes. That's why I sat here and was like, 
There's no one even called Chris on this grid. Nope, not on this one. Where do I? I don't even know Chris Barnes. What, JPB? Does he do JPB stuff? Oh, he does. Ah, oh, fair, fair dues, fair dues. All right, no, that's that's fair. Sorry, David. Um, my apologies. Um, completely yeah, calling I you somebody know. else. Yeah, just completely robbing your identity. I'm sure you're a fantastic <laughs> man. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's fine. It, it's cool. Um, I won't be here next week, so you can direct all of your grief to, towards James Parfit because I won't be here to deal with it. Uh, Janis Lucas Wenzel out there in warm-up. And I ask you this question pretty much any time there's a transition between race sessions. What is the point of going out for a five-minute warm-up session? I cannot answer that. Because, because there isn't. I don't do it. I sit back. I make a coffee out of my coffee machine or I sit and chill or I do something completely different. To be honest with you, I don't really see the point of it. Um, maybe for these guys, there might be a point. I don't know. But for me, I, I don't really see the point in this. I will literally just sit, chill, get a drink. I don't know. Really. <laughs> Know what else? Hey. Yeah. Because what can you learn in a five-minute transition between each race session? Like it's like cramming for an exam. Y you might be able to hang on to a little bit of knowledge, but is it going to rev revolutionary change your 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 outlook? Is it going to incredibly enhance your racing ability? Probably not. But can you benefit, say, in the example of an exam, you know, having a good night's sleep as opposed to cramming in? In the example of this, you've just had that high of adrenaline that you've had for the last 15 minutes. You've had all that carnage, whether it was a good result or a bad result. Surely it's more beneficial to just get up, walk around, have a coffee, pet your dog, get some fresh air, whatever it is that you can spend the next five minutes doing is going to be more beneficial than staying your hot and sweaty sim rig that we all know, especially as we approach the warmer months uh, of the year for those in the Northern Hemisphere, surely it's more beneficial to get out of that sweat and and breathe. Yeah, personally, I think it is. Um, Johnny there has just said, can practice standing starts, for example. Those, but if you haven't got it right by now, coming in. Are you? I think, I, I don't know. Say I don't really See that? do it. Um, I don't really do a the, lot. That I can understand because you go out on track, you stop, you put the clutch in, put it into first gear, you practice. What I don't understand is people that go out and do laps, laps upon laps. And, well, not even laps upon laps because there's only five minutes to do. They do like half a lap and in, in some cases and boom, session's over. Unless there is a specific corner that you need to go out and maybe say, all right, I don't want to try it in a race session, but I had an idea and I want to break 10 meters later into that corner. Yeah, fair enough. What I don't necessarily understand is why um, you would go out on hot lap. Have just been told by Kieran Sharp, and you can see actually on the session, very overcast here in Snetterton and a bit of rain on the horizon. Possibly, yep. And if it is going to be any, it's going to be a light little drizzle. So um, the guys are going to have to be a little bit careful. But we'll bring you up the grid here for race two. And uh, there it is. Simon Norton, then P10 in race one, lines up alongside Gurgley, uh, Conchabo on P2 uh, for the front row. James O'Reilly, head of Hayden Miller, row two, head of Aaron Full, uh, Vivaldi Rombouts in P6. Frank Porte Ruiz, head of Kieran Sharp, who finished P3 last time out uh, there in P8 today. Uh, Tom Davidson ahead of Jamie Nuttall, the top 10 ahead of Yanis Wenzel, Matt Axon in P12, uh, and the rest of the grid pretty much as it was. Bobby Moss, Grant Miller, David Santa Maria, Guillaume Hoots, Matt Smith from Thomas Hemler, David. Barnes there in P19, Stefan Huter, Marcel Hess, Oscar Saristo, Guillaume Howling, the P23 driver on the grid today, ahead of what could well be a slip, a slide, probably just a little bit greasy here in Snetterton. Who's coming out on top? Yeah, I don't think they're going to quite need rain tyres, but I think they're going to be close to it. It's going to be a tough decision. No Simon Norton. Simon Norton not taken to the start. 
Yeah, and here we go. Five lights are out once again. 25 minutes on the clock here in Silverstone. And there we go. James O'Reilly with a great start at, from the second row of the field. Already into the lead of the race. Going into turn number one, the Aston Martin liveried machine. Going into Richie's and it's side by side. A little bit further back. Rombout's full and sharp battling at there for fourth place. On to the brakes and Miller versus Conchaba. That fight for second place. Hayden Miller moves his way through quite nicely. Carnage in the background as they all settle his way back into racing action. Aaron Phil on the right in the net race livery machine. There you can see side by side with Gurgli Kanchabu, who, oh, sorry, uh, Viardi Rombouts, who has to tuck in behind. He's then trying to close in on the Hungarian of Kanchabu into the chicane. Very overcast, very foggy. Visibility definitely low. Uh, and of course, here at Snetherton, oh, you kind of do need to see where you're going, especially when you've got, well, 22 other cars all around you. Well, unfortunately, four of them have decided that they didn't want to get through the first lap cleanly. They've all gone and done this. Fortunately, four of them had an instant. They all group up together over bang, bang, bang. Like a little accordion effect to the in back of each other. But Hayden Miller under attack now from James O'Reilly. is coming down into turn one. O'Reilly and Miller. O'Reilly, Miller, Miller, O'Reilly. Riley O'Miller. Four times they've swapped already. And they're still not giving up as they're on the run down into turn two now. Who's going to be able to make it? Looks like the Aston Martin delivery machine should be able to have the inside. Is he going to get the outside coming out? Oh, all day. All day. And I can guarantee if they stay that close, Mr. Sweeney, will to wheels, one of them's going to end up in the air. Yeah, probably so. Too wide, too deep. Uh, we've got Miller, O'Reilly, Fulk and Charbo just in behind. P1 and P2, P3 and P4 into the chicane at the back end of the straight. Miller on the inside. That should be the dominant line. And he is able to take the apex of the second part. Aaron Full there trying to mount an attack on James O'Reilly. Of course, after holding off the attack from Conchabo, he's there in P3. Uh, and that's the dynamic that we're setting our way into immediately into this race. That pack dynamic, that pack mindset. Tracking the progress, though, of our top three in race one. The highest finisher, uh, of course, uh, well, the highest runner of them, I should say, Tom Davidson there in P7, Kieran Sharp, Jamie Nuttall, not making significant progress early on. No, oh, they're basically in ninth, eighth, and seventh. They've not really gone anywhere. They can see these two wide here. Davidson's on the right, Sharp's on the left. Sharp's going to try and go around the outside if he can. Is he going to be able to make it from where he is now? Because unfortunately, Davidson got himself all a little bit tangled up there as they continue to fight once more. And it is Kieran Sharp over Jamie Nuttall with Davidson and then the oh. machine. Yeah, yeah, I saw that as well. Gurgly Kansabo, unfortunately, went, got it all a little bit wrong. And up in the air he went, and trying to go around the outside, unfortunately, of Aaron Fall. That left him nowhere to go. It did not change for P2 as well. Rombout's on the inside of Aaron Full. Uh, and yeah, all kicking off. And that's the margin for error that we're talking about. And it's not really much of a margin at all. Porto Ruiz and Davidson, oh, I believe, Davidson's have had gone. some issues tumbling down the order. What has happened here? A spin onto the grass. Oh, and him. that collected Davidson. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, Porto Ruiz just spins on the grass, gets it loose, correcting, correcting. Not really sure, and I can guarantee if we show you what was going on in that cockpit, his hands were left and right really quickly. Left, then his right, not stopping it, and unfortunately, Davidson is there with him. So, um, Tom Davidson and Frank Ruiz have, um, well, dropped down to the bottom of the order. In fact, they've got into the pit lane altogether, but Rumbouts has got full tucked up right behind him with Kieran Sharp behind that. Then we've got 1.4 to Nuttall. Then we've got the gaggle again. It seems like we get the big pack collective and it's led by James O'Reilly with Bobby Moss, Gwilym Van Hoot, Gurgli Consabo, Santa Maria and Matt Acton. Now Acton in that please be patient student driver livery that if you ever see on an official give them a wide berth. A little bit, yeah. Santa Maria around the outside, beautifully done. Uh, turning the inside into the outside at Brundle, then into Nelson, able to stay ahead of the Hungarian uh, of Kun Sharbo. Five minutes basically into this race and already uh, a ton of drama to, uh, of course, note. Kieran Sharp back into the top four, making some good progress. Make that the top three as Rombaut has had a huge issue on the exit of Murray's onto the infield section. And it's easily done, just like that. Too much speed out of Murray's onto the grass and uh, away he goes. Yeah, I can guarantee there's a grass catch somewhere, whether or not it's on the exit or on the on entry. It'll be on the exit. Yeah, way Man, too much speed in. The yeah. car was loose. 
before he even got to the apex. You could see the rear end going, uh, and I can guarantee he knew full well that he'd let off the brakes too early there. Turning the car, didn't have any of it. Santa Maria looking to the outside, of course, of Bobby Moss, not quite able uh, to go for that particular move. We've got full and sharp as well in that battle for P2. Great news, though, all this carnage for Hayden Miller. 2.7 seconds clear of the pack. Yeah, he's escaped. He has literally escaped for the man from the Phoenix Racing Team. He's just put his foot down. He's gone. Still got, I do, he's still got just under 20 minutes. Still a lot of racing to go. And he really wants to rely on Aaron Full, giving Kieran Sharp a whole heap of grief here. Now, the thing for Miller, he's just got to go round, make sure he hits every apex, make sure he does that 108, 109 that he, he's capable of that he just hit last time. Looks like Thomas Helmers also, unfortunately, had a little bit of an incident either with himself or it looks like a solo. So from there for Thomas Helmer. But for Miller, he's just got to keep going. Hitting as close to his best as he, as he can. His best is a 108.81. And the reason I'm bringing that up is Kieran Sharp's best is a 108.44. So nearly three temps, nearly four temps faster than Miller. So Miller's got to rely on two things. Full um, pressurizing him as best as he possibly can. And Miller just doing his quality laps every single lap. Yeah, putting in uh, as good of a lap time as possible. But even then, it doesn't necessarily need to be quality laps. I mean, for, for these two, if they continue to battle, it's going to be difficult for them to close two seconds around a one minute, eight lap time circuit. It's it's difficult. So for Miller, he's just settling into rhythm, keeping it on the grey staff and hoping uh, that they continue to battle and don't close that gap anymore. But for right now, he's safe. Don't get complacent. Don't feel secure or safe. But don't push the limits uh, and force yourself into that mistake. Exactly what James O'Reilly has done. A driver that was leading this race going into turn number one is now outside the top ten, even beyond that. Yeah, he is, unfortunately. And it looks like it's quite a few people managed to get past O'Reilly. Started kind of here, really. Uh, last corner again. But the question is, was it last corner coming in? It looked like he may have just caught. Nope. Done exactly the same as what Romabouts did. The only difference is. Uh, he managed to stay on the circuit there as well. Full and sharp. You don't know how much you're doing Miller a favour at the moment here, Zach, by battling away and Jamie Nuttles in the background. Yeah, all the favours really for, for, for Hayden Miller. He's just going to be able to feel more and more secure at the front the more and more these drivers battle. We're just under eight minutes of the way through. Got basically two thirds more of this race left to go. You can see Hayden Miller. He's not a million miles away. Oh! And that is way too much speed. Aaron Paul, you can see it coming from a mile away, sharp into the side of him. And that is going to be damage into the pit lane comes last year's runner up. He is effectively out of the running for this race. So too is Aaron Full. That releases Jamie Nuttall. But in doing so, one and a half seconds was lost to Hayden Miller. And he's going to be gleaming with a smile about that. Can't right. say the same for the other three. No, nope. Full has done the same thing that everybody else has done. Or the three people that have had incident in that final corner, they've done exactly the same thing. That unfortunately puts Full all the way down in 12th. Sharp's come out in 11th. So at the moment, Miller is sitting out in front for three and a half seconds here. Now, I would say for him got to try and hit some of his best. Don't get me wrong, Nuttall is behind, but Nuttall's best is a 108.38. His best is a 108.81. I'm not going to take into consideration the last lap time at the moment because that's not variable of true pace considering Nuttall had an incident coming around the last corner uh, on that one. But uh, I think the next lap or so, we might have to start looking into what the lap times are going to be because I think Nuttall will have the pace, but it's how much he's going to have the pace over Miller at the front of the field. Exactly that. Is there enough time? Is there enough laps for him to close? That last one, four tenths quicker, which means he's going to need, uh, what is that? So 32 would be about, yeah, about eight times. So yeah, there's enough time if he keeps up at four tenths of a second a lap, but that's a tough margin to keep consistently. Uh, so Jamie Nuttall is going to need some great pace if he wants to take the double victory for round number one here at Snetherton. 
But of course, only time will tell. Maybe there is a mistake from Miller for Nuttall. We won't know. The next closest battle, though, is this one for P4. Santa Maria versus Moss versus Rombats. Conchabo, Matt Acton actually pulling out to the left-hand side to try and take the uh, place away from Conchabo in the very stripy yellow and black. Uh, that is Matt Acton going to the outside of the last part of the chicane. Nicely done from Acton. And, well, just goes to show he's not a bad photographer. He's not a bad racing driver either. No, it just goes to show it can be done as well. Anybody that's sitting at home thinking, whoa, can do it. You know, and, and that's the thing. There's a lot of things you can do in ice racing. It both, oh, Bobby oh. Moss. Bobby Moss has gone, gone, gone for his audition in the Upside Down for Stranger Things. Off he goes. See you later. But unfortunately for Bobby Moss, off the side of the circuit. Um, unfortunately for him. But can go by side by side, but as long as both drivers aren't silly, you know, and, and that's the thing. I've, I've seen it in the Martinsville officials this week at NASCAR. I went side by side with somebody for at least three laps in there, and that's not normally done because normally somebody comes and sends it and punts you off in the meantime. And it's been a very tricky week, but if both people have got their heads screwed on and leave the respected amount of room that the cars need, can do it. Just like that, Rombouts versus Santa Maria once again battling their way through. It takes two to tango. It takes mutual it respect. Uh, it's, it's very easy for things to go drastically wrong. But if both drivers are like-minded and not having an F1 livery on a F4 machined car, then, you know, you, you might be able to get away with it. Um, it's, again, it's that mutual respect. People who go into the with the mindset of, I get the apex first. It's my corner. Don't really care if on the outside or not. We're going to crash. That's not the mindset that you want to have. And unfortunately, oh. it's the mindset that a lot of sim racers do have. Let's see how these two go side by side into Richie's. I think Santa Maria did back out and he did in the end. Approaching the half distance mark, though, with 12 minutes on the clock. Matt Acton, by the way, soaring his way through the field on the inside of turn two, looking to make it a top five finish after taking P14 in race one. He's looking, he's looking not, actually, no, it's P12 in race one, P14 in qualifying, P5 in race two, Matt Acton. Yeah, he's up six places doing a stellar job at the moment. I mean, nobody's going to really argue what Matt's up to. You can see the gains are all in the top six. And the Tarbo is the first one in the top ten that's lost positions. And unfortunately for Acton, we're just bigging him up, and he goes and does that. Uh, Saristo doing a great job. He's up 13 places. Miller's up three. Hamlin's up nine. And everybody else, unfortunately, as you can see on the left-hand side there, is down at that position. And Matt Acton, I think, just got it all a little bit wrong going into Nelson. Started getting loose, couldn't correct the car. And unfortunately, he's gone round right at the moment that you were bigging him up. And unfortunately for Matt Acton, he's gone and done himself a cropper coming into Murray's once more. So them two little big ups you've done there, Mr. Sweeney. You cursed the young man as he's now going to go round and join in the list. No? James Pyfer, I know you are one for your conspiracies, but don't tell me the commentator's curse is one of them. No, I don't. I don't to be honest, oh. I, I think at the moment that we're talking to them, either two things happen, right? They've got the broadcast on next to them, and they sit there and go, oh, my God, I'm on TV, and then it all goes wrong. Or it's just a pure and utter poet's skill level situation. It oh, is. I, it's skill issue. That is all it is. Uh, of course, there, there's there's three things. It's bad luck, bad driving, or a bit of both. Um, and that's all there is. It would happen whether or not we looked at them or not. It, it's, it, it's just that it is the way it is. Uh, Miller versus Full side by side. This is the fight for P11. Full on the outside. You've got Miller backing up quite nicely uh, on the left and Full able to take uh, the full amount of speed around the outside going into that chicane, although a little bit too much uh, off the exit. Guillaume Hamling making some good progress up nine places from where he started. He's battling away uh, with the pole sitter, fast lap taker and P2 finisher of race one. Uh, that is Tom Davidson there in P13. Uh, of course, well, the lucky luck, the lucky number that is P13, I think, says everything you need to know about Tom, Tom Davidson's race. Yeah, it's not gone pretty well, has it? Let's be real about it, unfortunately. He got caught up in it. It wasn't his own doing, should we say. There, there, there was a second party involved. So, unfortunately, for um, Davidson, he's dropped down the order. He's just got to make a best of a bad situation. I think... The, the first round, I, I, we can sit here and look at the scores next week, right? And they wouldn't be anywhere in conjunction with where people will finish in the standings. 
probably, to be honest with you, we wouldn't have to bring the standings up until about round three, at the end of round three, round four, because that's when they're going to start making probably a real difference. And these first round, it's literally getting points on the board. That's what they've got to do. They've got to get points on the board and they've got to make sure that they're scoring. Scoring every race, you're always going to be up and around there. And that's the thing with sort of short sprint championships, only six rounds. Uh, so 12 races is this championship. That doesn't leave you a lot to, to, to go and score points, right? It, it leaves you what, just, just around about, yeah, under 10% of the total score, about 8% of the total point score per round. That's a decent chunk. Uh, well, per race, I should say, 16%, of course, for, for the round. That's a decent chunk of the overall for the season in one race, which means that you don't actually have a lot of time to regain any points that you do lose. It's consistency that is very, very much key in kicking things off. And yeah, you can sit here and say, yeah, well, it's the start of the season. And, and to an extent, I agree. At this phase, after round one, the championship lead, it's a novelty. It's a nice thing to have. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go and win the whole thing. But also, when we get to rounds four, five, six, the latter half of the season, and then we look back as Santa Maria comes into the pit lane, and we look back and we go, hmm, he's five points behind. Where could he have gotten those extra five points? And then we think, ah, Silverstone, uh, Silverstone, Snetterton. And we go, ah, Snetterton, he lost a position. There's five points, boom. And, and it's hindsight. So you've got to do everything you can in the present to make sure you don't hate yourself in a few weeks' time when we get to the end of the season. That's the thing. Every series has a story. The story of how the championship was won. The story of who finished second. The story of who finished third. Every driver in that series then has their own story. You know, Saristo getting caught up in the incident in race one. Is he going to kick back and think, well, I've lost points because he gained 14 here in race two? You know, and the same for Davidson. Is he going to be kicking himself because he got caught up in an accident in race two that dropped him down the field? You know, every driver will have their own story, but the series will give their own, it will give the complete book. I think that's the thing. The drivers is just a chapter, you know, a chapter of Oscar Saristo's season, a chapter of Matt Acton's, you know, Van Hoot's in the pits now, Miller's in the pits as well as they go in and looking at changing tires. Uttle now takes the lead. Rombouts takes it second and Consabo takes third with Moss in fourth. Hayden Miller's back out on the race circuit here, sitting ahead of Saristo. Saristo's just about to come around the outside. Swoops round him there. Like, unfortunately, Miller was stood still. Yeah, and, well, top speed, definitely paying off there. Bit of contact. Oscar Saristo into turn number two, cutting off Miller ever so slightly. Uh, Matt Axon now back onto the scene as well, looking very, very uh, mighty. Uh, in his recovery, of course, after that small mistake, looking to bounce his way back. Uh, top five still very much on the cars. Hayden Miller, of course, who was looking very strong to go and win this race. Not quite the case now. Matt Acton on the inside of the chicane is through. Miller going to fight it all the way to the next part of the apex. But the student driver is there. Into the pit lane, though, comes Jamie Nuttall from the race lead. And let's see where he comes out relative to those around. And Rumbouts is in as well. Let's see if Conchabo comes in on this lap as well. He does. Plenty of drivers making their way down pit lane. Let's see how they fare against those that already have. Oh, oh. Acton. Right Again. In, right in front of Miller. Miller was on a run there. He needed to get on his bike a little bit. He did not need to get caught up by that. Nuttle has taken the lead. He's on for a two for two. And, and now for Miller, he has got Sharp not too far behind. Him. Nuttle, um, from Miller's point of view, he did not need this. He Acton to make this last corner it would have been a lot closer on the exit and unfortunately Acton went round that's put uh, Miller off the side of the circuit and Miller has unfortunately get, gone round so tough one here for these guys as well don't forget they have got a complete 75% of the race distance Mr Sweeney as well to be looking at obviously being in the points they don't complete that and they don't obviously get scored. 
some of the drivers here today are not going to get scored. The, the likes of Stephen Hutter, who has finished down in 22nd. He's only completed two and, well, not even three laps. David Barnes is a lap down, but he's two laps down currently. So he's still within that rules at this moment in time. So all to play for and all to play for for Hayden Miller. How long can he hold on to Kieran Sharp? Well, let's find out. Probably not for very long. Here comes Kieran Sharp to the right-hand side, trying to promote himself into P2, does exactly that. Not really much that Hayden Miller can do in order to put up a, a, a good defence. They've got 1.7 up to Jamie Nuttall. And if they don't want to allow him to take the double, then they are going to need to go and get after him, work as a contingent and, you know, drive as fast as you can. Drive the wheels off that car. Not literally, of course. That's suboptimal. But Nuttall, he's out there. He's all by himself. These two are a team they well they're not a team but for the moment for the next few laps they are just while they try and do everything they can to catch up slipstream off each other use each other as a slingshot work together to get after him because that's the only chance that they've got second third whatever there's a couple of points between them but the fight for the win for kieran chap and for hayden miller is going to mean a hell of a lot more than p2 or p3 yeah you've got to try and i know this is not easy when you two people in from a completely different team right we've got dsrc we've got phoenix racing here in uh, in second and third but you've got cracked racing in first and the, and the only way you are going to catch that is from miller's point of view is do two things stay behind sharp and let him bring you up to him because sharp's clearly the quicker and then that's no disrespect to miller whatsoever miller's best time 10859 sharps at 10844 right does it quicker let him go, try and follow him, and allow him to pull him up as Davidson has made his way up into fifth now, benefited massively from the pit stop cycles. Willem Hamling and Frank Bruy are going at each other for eighth and ninth here. So from Miller's point of view, allow Sharp to take him to Nuttall. I think that's going to be the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's no point battling. There's no point having their egos with them uh, uh you know with them all the way they don't want to be holding themselves to their ego put it aside work together get off the nuttle i don't think there's enough time personally that they're going to be able to oh. go and do it so maybe at some point that ego is going to creep back in and miller's going to be like well we're not going for the win i want as many points as i can i want to go for p2 uh, that previous lap time uh, of course changed a little bit because the pit stops and things on their representable lap times it's a net zero zero yeah. three of a second not really much that's changing definitely not enough that it's going to change within the span uh, of two and a half laps three to go i believe it'll be two at the line depending <laughs> uh, on when nuttall crosses it fingers crossed we don't actually know how long the session's got left thanks i racing um so we'll see obviously what what happens with uh with jamie nuttall crossing the line and whether or not uh, he will actually take uh, the, the, the chequered flag, whether or not he'll even see the white flag, whatever it might well be, uh, in a couple of moments' time. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? We'll keep an eye on it and, and see what I race in, or whether or not Barney's even going to show up. I don't even think he was there last time. I think he must have been having a call at that point, because I didn't even see him waving the chequered flag. So Barney's clearly taken a vacation. So it, at some points, we get a little bit lost. We're very going to be very close. We should be right. Technically, we should be one and one more, Mr. Sweeney. One and this one, and then should be the final lap of the race. Right? Should. Should. I, uh, I say that in, I do say that in a should word, but should in there. So, uh, should. Should. Just, just making, just, just so we're covering off our side. Uh, we are yet to see any rain unless i'm blind it doesn't it doesn't seem no, to be just not. very 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 overcast uh so unless there's a sudden downpour with a minute to go in this race which to be fair i wouldn't say no to definitely uh add some a little bit of spice at the end of this race that uh, would be very very interesting indeed uh, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be the case once again norfolk letting us down uh aaron full looking to the inside of hayden miller that's going to be going side by side through the chicane outside once again for full who tries to get the up and under nicely done and he tries uh, to fight once again going into the bomb hole but hayden miller doing a brilliant job of defending this podium last lap then coming up into quorum and aaron full finds his way past for the podium oh send it up the inside Go on. yeah big brave boy oh he hit a curb there unfortunately uh did hayden miller 
again, there's no Barney. So we're going to presume this is the final lap of the race as um, Barney's having a coffee. Maybe it's cold in Norfolk. Barney needs to go inside. I, I mean, I wouldn't blame him. Maybe he didn't even turn up. Again, wouldn't blame him for that either. Uh, seven seconds left on the clock. Where is Jamie Nuttall around the circuit? Got about seven uh, tenths of it left to go, essentially. Just over half a lap left of this uh, of this race before he takes the double win for round one. Yeah, he's done a great job, to be fair. Absolutely great job. He benefited from the pit stop strategy cycles. I think that was the thing for Nuttall. And he did benefit massively from that and and this is what's happened and unfortunately for miller the problem was is miller got stuck behind acton who got it wrong in the last corner which then held miller up even more because if miller had managed and acton had managed to come through i reckon it really would have been a close exit oh i think so absolutely well here he comes out of the final corner. Jamie Nussel has soared his way to not one, but two victories. The opening round of the TSRC F4 Sprint Championship Season 2 goes the way of the esteemed veteran of Jamie Nussel. Uh, Guillaume Hamling, you can see there coming across line. He will finish P8, the driver from Luxembourg. A brilliant result from him, up 15 places uh, from where he started. That uh, was close to P7, uh, not quite enough in the end. We'll run you through the full extent of the grid order, uh, of course, in just a second. But what a race uh, it absolutely was. Uh, 25 minutes, action non-stop. Yeah, I think that it was one of them, to be fair, right? And now I'm going to put this in a respective opinion and it wasn't half bad i think that was the thing i didn't really know what to expect coming in when you get 20 drivers and some of them are new what to really was going to happen because we have a series and across every series we do when there's when it's the opening round and you get new drivers in sometimes it all just goes a little bit peak tong until you can figure out who you can't race and can race but I think here, very nice, very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, 25 minutes of racing have concluded. Jamie Nuttall then taking a full 100 and 30 points from race points alone. I don't think he scored the fastest lap in either race. So just 130 points, just 130 points for Nuttall. Uh, Kieran Sharp there in P2, making it a double podium for him. Aaron Full. Last lap uh, swap or penultimate lap swap with Hayden Miller sees him take third while uh, the Phoenix Racing driver takes fourth. Tom Davidson P5 ahead of Rombouts in sixth. Porter Ruiz ahead of Gim Hamling up 15 places from where he started. Brilliant race from the driver from Luxembourg. Uh, Santa Maria, Guillaume Hoots, the top 10 ahead. Hungarian of Gurgli Kunshabo. Bobby Moss, a spin in the infield for him, still able to muster up P12. Uh, James O'Reilly, Oscar Ceriso, Matt Acton. P15 for him in the end. A couple of mistakes. The top five was definitely there on the cards. Uh, Janis Wenzel ahead of Marcel Hess, Grant Miller, Matt Smith, and Thomas Hemmler there in P20. David Barnes, P21. Stefan Hooter, Simon Norton, the 23rd and final driver, was on pole. Uh, unfortunately, uh, didn't get to the checkered flag. Didn't get anywhere near the checkered flag, unfortunately. Uh, I believe we have got Hayden Miller in the interview waiting room if you'd like to just have a quick little chat with him before we round things up. Of course, Hayden, for you, I, I suppose... Talk us through your evening as such. Race two, how, how were you feeling, obviously, with the, with the chance for the win on the cards in the end of P4? Decent points bagged and not a bad way to start the season. Yeah, it was all right. Obviously, race one, I knew it was going to be reverse grid. So I wasn't actually, you know, trying to get top points, top position, because I knew I'd start in the front in race two. So race two just started, started well. I knew to instantly pressure the guy in front of me and he unfortunately made a mistake so after i got into p1 i just knew to keep my head down and just you know keep the keep the lap times fast and consistent obviously not quality pace but it was fast enough to keep uh, jamie behind me um but soon i was i was getting a bit light on fuel so it was getting quite under steery and loose on the back end but I knew he was pulling. He was coming. He was coming close to me. So I just decided to box. But obviously, Matt Acton had a wee spin when I was behind him, and I would have got Jamie out of the pits, but that sadly put me into the gravel, and I just, I just got like bogged down at the gravel. Easily done. Small mistake, and yeah, unfortunately, that's all it took in the end. 
as I say, still good points for you, even if it you know wasn't your aim as such. Going forward, uh, of course, in the championship, what are you expecting for? Uh, of course, you joined us for the second half of last season, your best result, a P4. Are you looking to, well, I mean, you've already matched it in race one of this season. Are you looking to, to go for podiums, wins, the championship? What is your aspiration over the course of the next five weeks? Well, you never know, obviously, because the new season's ahead and the, there's new tracks. Some tracks I'm decent at, some tracks I love, some tracks I absolutely hate. But it's just it's just a matter of getting some practice in and hopefully I can get into the podium points. But these guys are really fast, especially people like Kieran and not all and they're really fast and it's it's not it's all down to driver pace skill awareness because the setup isn't the setup's fixed. So yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Before we let it go, is there any shout outs you want to give to the YouTube chats? I'm seeing my friend here, Billy Bob. Um, just been he's he's got me into Iris and he's given me a big big support, big big help. So just shout out to him for getting me involved in this and then giving me a bunch of help with the cars and everything. Awesome stuff. Well, take care, Hayden. Congratulations for today. We'll see you next week. Thank you. See you. Very much, uh, Hayden uh, Miller. Then and next, actually, I can see the the the, the big man himself, Kieran Sharp, uh, joining us today. Kieran, congratulations. I, I mean, not perfect, but double podium, P three, P two in the end. Can't really complain. Decent qualifying as well. Great start to the season. Yeah, I can certainly welcome that. Um, bad I didn't take out Nuttall in race one with a knock up. But uh, yeah, I, th I think Corinne could have been on. I just uh, needed to tidy it up a bit uh, tonight. Yeah, so uh, of course, don't want to rub it in too much, but you didn't win the championship last year. Um, are you going for it again this season? I mean, of course, that's the aim, but Jamie Nuttall, two wins out of the gate for round one. I mean, ha is that daunting? Are, are you phased by that? Are you scared by that? Or are you just come going to come out swinging in Sebring? No, I have to say, just try and stay near the front. Yeah, like these kind of formats, it's all about just make sure you're up there each week. And hopefully on average, you know, you're scoring more than, than everyone else. It's not always about just running out right, week in, week out. But it was good to see Nuttall uh, win two races. He had some really bad luck last season with some unfortunate crashes and uh, mistakes. So, uh, yeah, he showed some good pace tonight. Definitely did, indeed. So, I mean, for the rest of the season, uh, uh, of course, I don't necessarily know how much swing you had in the, in the track choice uh, as such, but what round are you looking forward to most over the course of the next few weeks? Oh, there's some interesting tracks there. We've chosen a lot of the shorter and some of the interesting layouts. Um, I think the final round would be interesting at Hockenheim with all the long straights and slipstream will certainly uh, spice things up. I think so, indeed. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations for your double podium. Before we let you go, is there any shout outs you want to give to the YouTube chats? Uh, yeah, just thanks everyone for watching and uh, everyone who turns up to these races you know uh, we, we don't exist without them well that is that is very much true yeah you can't exactly go racing without drivers and, uh, and people to watch the broadcast i suppose us in the commentary booth as well it's fine um well <laughs> thank you very much kieran i'm sure we'll see you back uh, in a week's time to take the fight to jamie nassel hopefully we'll have andrew pike actually show up and you know sh show up but maybe sebring's going to be a bit too warm for him and his his bald head uh james parfit <laughs> and a successful first round it must be said <laughs> It is. I think you've just managed to upset half the field in the process. But yeah, a fair one. It was a very successful opening round, yes. said earlier on, you know, normally opening rounds can be a little bit more chaotic, but this wasn't. It was fairly clean. Yes, was there a rejoining race one that mainly get looked at? Absolutely. Because it was driving back in, cars coming on, and unfortunately chaos than needed but i think overall once the drivers just get to settle down learn each other's ways learn how they get on they'll be fine don't expect any 
I don't think so at all. It was a very successful first round. Ladies and gentlemen of both JP Broadcasting and, of course, the Sim Racing Collective uh, YouTube chats, of course, make sure you are subscribed. Turn the bell on for notifications to not miss a single thing. Of course, here on JPB, we do pretty much anything uh, in the world of Sim Racing. Same too is true for the TSRC. Hang on. TSRC. It's not the TSRC because that would be the the Sim Racing Collective. Just TSRC. They do everything as well. GT3s, of course, these open wheelers uh, on both iRacing and, of course, over in the world of uh, a set of course of competizione, both PC and on console. So get yourself involved uh, on both communities. My name has been Zach Sweeney. I've had James Parfit alongside me in the commentary booth here today. And in a week's time, we'll take to Sebring April 12th for round two of season two of the TSRC F4 Sprint. We'll see you then. It's goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.